this podcast. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf, and we've been talking about wellness, how to think and eat yourself smart based on my book called Think and Eat Yourself Smart, which is available at drleaf.com. And also my online version that goes with this book called 63 Days to Think and Eat Yourself Smart. So today we are going to talk about addictions. And this is a, you know, I get so many questions via email and at conferences about food being addictive and how can you control this? And, you know, some people feel that they're controlled by food. And I, and I want you to realize today from this talk that you're not controlled by food. You control your choices about everything, including what you eat. But there are a few facts that we just need to know about what food does inside of our brain and how we can actually rewire our brains to overcome these addictions. So, you know, we all realize that food is a biological need for survival. That's, that's, not news. So we are as addicted to food as we are to love because when they did research on the seven top addictions, they found that love was the top addiction. No one can live without love and more people die from loneliness than they do from any other disease or any other anything, um, sickness and so on. And the second top need that humans have is for obviously for food so our brains what actually happens is that when we think about food our brain brain reward circuits actually fire up when we think and eat in a healthy way when we think and eat in an unhealthy way it actually affects the way that the reward systems of the brain fire up which then affects the whole digestive process so god has given us an incredible variety of food you know diversity is the law of the brain it's the law of the body it's the law for the food that we eat it's the law of humanity and we find that there's such a lot of variety in in foods which are exactly what we they're exactly what we need in the specific areas that we live so the food is literally wired for love and that literal that that wired for love principle operates in our brain as well so joining me in this discussion i have my a very intelligent brilliant daughter with me today jessica leaf who runs our ngo called the whole mind project and i have to tell you if she wasn't cooking for us we would not be eating like we do we all love it when jessica's around because jessica you're such an amazing cook and you create your own recipes based on just your love and knowledge of food that you've that you've really gained from practicing and reading and researching you just have such an insight into eating and you know you're we, we're addicted to your food which is a good addiction because addiction actually means you know addiction is a good word it means consumed by we designed to be consumed by things that are good you know just tell us a little bit about how you see addiction and food from a positive and a negative point of view well, I mean, my food journey began when I was trying to overcome bulimia. So obviously that's a very negative addiction, this idea of just this desire to eat food and to consume as much as possible to to make my emotions or to su- suppress my emotions or the way I was feeling about my body or my image. And so I had to learn how to eat again and to make food into a positive addiction in the sense that um, I mean, really, when it comes to about, it comes to it, it's like whatever your mind thinks about the most, that's your addiction. And when it comes to food, it's like how do you think about food? How do you characterize food? What is, well, how do you imagine food in your own life? And that's always a good place to start to see if your relationship to food is healthy or if it's not so healthy. And so, thankfully, that the way we think about food and the, the, hence the, way, the decisions we make about food can be changed by changing the way you think. And so, um, it can be a positive addiction or an addiction to just the enjoyment of food in, a sen- in the community setting. So, this enjoyment of cooking and sharing meals with the people that you love, that itself can be something that you just crave and want and desire. Like, I don't like eating alone. I love eating with people. people. So I will cook extra food and invite, say, my sisters or my brothers or you guys and say, do you want to share the food? Share food with me because the enjoyment of sharing that food is for something that I love and yeah absolutely it's so true and then and also like I know we often say as a family because we eat so many vegetables and we just love one of our favorite things at the moment is kale salad that you make with a certain um, olive oil dressing and um, that um, you, uh, that nutritional yeast and we just love it because you can you kind of become addicted to to foods and sometimes exactly find so you find yourself craving those foods that you eat a lot <laughs> and if that's a lot of vegetables um you can really just come to enjoy vegetables so much that really that is my favorite part of every single meal is just what I can do with my vegetables and my fruit. And so that really is, you know, a habit that you can build in over time time. just because you Mm -hmm. don't want to don't necessarily quote unquote feel like eating something right now doesn't mean that you can't learn to really enjoy and love it as part of a healthy balanced diet. And essentially what you really want to do is think about why do you eat food and the way that you eat food and become addicted to the good ways of doing that and not to 
don't let food control you. Don't let food become your idol where you think about it so much and it consumes all of your attention that it really is directing and controlling your life and your decisions. And what's really important is to understand the concept of good and negative addiction when it comes to food. So if basically our body knows what it needs in terms of climate, in terms of what you're going through, in terms of like stress that you've been exposed to, and maybe you've been traveling a lot. And if you learn to listen to your body by eating healthy, you'll find that you'll just suddenly crave things. And you know, when I was running my practice, I would often have mom say to me that, gosh, my child ate six bananas, is that okay? And I'd say, well, what's your child been through and whatever. And if you, live, if you learn to listen to your body, you'll actually suddenly maybe eat a lot of one type of food, but that's because your body's needing the vitamins and the minerals etc for yourself for you to function in that zone but having said that if you are eating the modern american diet if you're eating a lot of processed foods with chemicals and things you mess up this natural ability of your body to see what it needs and desires and needs to consume in larger quantities so the positive addiction becomes a very negative addiction and that is because if you recall at the beginning of this podcast i said things like and um, when you think about good healthy food you actually your ba- your reward circuits fire up in your brain so the same so so when you think of when you eat the toxic negative food what it does is it disrupts this so you then you can't read what your body needs and then you eat the wrong kind of food and a different kind of addiction is set up that is a distorted addiction which is actually damaging your brain and the research actually shows that for example the little dendrites which are little branches on the tops of your neurons which is in what we are where we understand memory to form so your memories actually form literally inside your dendrites and what happens is that when you are eating the modern American diet and you're craving more and more and you eat too much of it, these dendrites will actually shrink. So your learning and your memory gets affected. So the modern American diet's not, a, this is not just some, oh, it makes you feel bad. It actually damages your brain. It causes brain damage. Your, we have, we find as well in your hippocampus, which is a little structure deep down inside your brain, kind of behind your eyes, um, kind of curves over the top of your eyebrows if you want to sort of try and visualize where it is. Um, it's very important for the conversion of long, short to long term memory. So processing of information so just listening to me now as you're processing information now the modern american diet processed foods etc will actually damage the neurons in that area of your brain and affect short conversion of short to long term memory which is really um, not good at all because if that pattern happens constantly you can set up a pathway of damage that predisposes you to the dementias and things but obviously this pathway of damage is not your destiny this is something that you can change. And so this is something I had to learn how to change in my own life. And obviously it's not always easy to overcome addictions. There's many days when I was originally uh, trying to, you know, overcome this, just this inclination, something upset me and I just wanted to run to the cupboard and eat a whole bunch of food. And you, you know, there's, um, there is a struggle. It is an internal struggle and it's not always easy, but it is, in, it is possible. And that's where the science of, um, the, the science of thought comes in, which is what I've been studying for 30 years. What we find is that the withdrawal that you go through from toxic foods and toxic mind patterns follows the same kind of time frame, which is really interesting. So your body, um, your, when you eat the modern American diet, for example, your body will when you stop eating it your body will go through this the, literally the same kind of withdrawal as if you were going through withdrawal from cocaine or heroin or something like that because what they found is that the modern american diet is actually more addictive than cocaine and heroin which is very interesting so your body will go through periods of withdrawal and it does take cycles of 21 days for your body to heal and change so when you've eaten the wrong foods and you your, your brain has changed and your body has changed so you're going through withdrawal in your brain and your body and this works in cycles of 21 days as your brain rewires and as your body actually heals and so there's generally a very difficult phase when you first come off like sodas or various different types of the modern american diet you can get headaches and all kinds of um, symptoms where people then think oh i need to have that that soda or i need to have that bad food or i need to do this but that's just your body learning to readjust and if you push through i mean essentially it's like a craving to to get high yes and you have to push through that craving and often it starts with this you know many times like many addictions food is something that is a symptom rather than the actual cause of the problem so it could be low self-esteem or it could be troubles that you're going through in your life in your home in your marriage in your relationships and so essentially what you have to also start doing is not only think about the way you think about food but also the way that you think about yourself and sometimes it starts with detoxing your brain to uh, get a higher self-esteem absolutely and really believing that you can do it because if you go through something and you don't believe you actually can do it you don't believe that you're worth it then 
this can actually really impede your progress in the long run. So really it starts with your attitudes towards yourself and your body that you have to change. So we're and talking, then you can start changing the way that you eat. So we're talking about addictions from a mind perspective. So you can hear what Jessica said. You can say, okay, I'm going to stop eating that. But you have to have your mind prepared. There's a preparation phase where you have to start realizing you've got to deal with the toxic issue underlying. Why are you binging on that food? And why did you get yourself into the situation? So there's always that component. But then you've got to recognize, and this is the main thing that we want to bring through to you today is that it took time for you to get into that toxic negative thinking pattern and toxic eating pattern so it's going to take time to come out of it so when you feel bad mentally and physically is to push through the cycles of 21 days and the research shows that it does take up to 63 days sometimes longer sometimes 84 sometimes up to 152 days these different it's going to be different for each person your if, circumstances are different and you have to also give yourself grace because there'll be days Absolutely. when you fail and those days can be very hard. But number one tip I would say is that if you fail, pick yourself up again. Have people in your life that support, support you, support mm -hmm. that your lifestyle. I mean, for many of us, changing the way we eat is difficult if we live in a home where, say, our spouse or our partner or our friends or our roommates eat differently. So maybe if you can get them or your friends or your anyone who's in your life to go on this journey with you, having that support system in place can be incredible for your own healing and it can really help you believe in yourself when you really don't feel like believing in yourself absolutely and, and that's so, what we did with you as yes. a family we we jessica always ate with us so as she was overcoming the bulimia and the anorexia she never we, we didn't allow her to eat in her room she always ate with us so we cooked together we ate together so it became food became very much a happy community situation but it was exactly. hard at first it was awful for you and then you changed over time so it was definitely each day became easier and easier and that's what we want to encourage you that oh yeah and i mean those or when you're in those deepest darkest moments is remember it can only get better and it does get better life is not about those moments so don't let them consume you and you've heard us stress constantly the importance of community and eating and how that's a priority in longevity. So when you know when, when any kind of eating disorder manifests or any kind of addiction, even if you just are just trying to get off drinking those sodas, which are so damaging to your brain and your body and shortening your lifespan, having someone do it with you does definitely make it so much oh, easier. Oh yes, the company of human beings is priceless when it comes to really loving and helping each other. Essentially, it really taps into this, what we've spoken about before, our wired for love design. And so when we are in that, in that, when we're socially integrated, when we have that community, it is, I mean, I can't, I can't stress enough that I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the community I have had and do have. And so really, if you don't have anyone in your life, go out, join a shelter, homeless shelter, start volunteer in gardens, Fun. start a group, join a meetup, sign up for meetups. I mean, my number one tip is to build yourself a community build, build yourself that a community. you can really trust and rely on because so often we cannot do it alone, even if we think we can. And so just admitting that and really working towards building that community. There's so many great ways of doing that, especially in the modern age with all the apps that you allow you to do local meetups for people that have similar interests. So what we have is the 63 day think and eat yourself smart online program program which is a great way to, it talks about think pray eat every day is divided up into three sections think pray eat and this is a great thing to, it's designed to do you can do it on your own but it's really designed to do with someone else and that's something you could do online with each other with another friend and we also have a support group on Facebook Dr. Lee um, it's the Dr. Lee Facebook support group we have so much social media to help you but the support group you could find someone maybe who will do it with you if you don't have someone directly in your community so just here in this particular space you can find help to this so really we can can, we really can learn to balance and get healthy addictions because we are wired for love. So we want to encourage you today as you listen to this podcast that you can overcome those toxic addictions. You are wired for love and your mind is stronger than your body. Your brain and your body have to do what you tell it to do. Thank you for joining us today and we look forward to sharing more on wellness in the next podcast. Mm -hmm.